All right, here we are. It's uh, Eugene Driscoll, Jody Mosier, and our super special guest, Michael Lee Murphy. Hello. Yay. He's our Canadian intern. American. <laughs> and he just, where, where'd you just return from? I just returned. Literally from, just walked in the door. Just walked in the door from a uh, Valley Chamber of Congress meeting. Congress. Congress. All right. <laughs> Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting featuring uh, Governor Daniel Malloy. Uh, he was speaking at um, a uh, precision manufacturing uh, uh, warehouse in Shelton. Uh, where he was delivering um, the first of uh, what we're told to believe is many um, stops on his jobs tour. Oh, the this jobs is tour. The first. Jobs tour 2011. <coughs> jobs tour 2011. Now, did you get what well, we want to know? Sorry. So he did his dog and pony show mm -hmm. where he uh, touted jobs he's bringing to the state. Mm -hmm. And then you, how'd it go? You went up to him, you had a bunch of questions prepared. I had a bunch of questions prepared, and I. Um, All having to do with Canada? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All. Um, Canada did come up actually, um, but uh, no, I chased him uh, out the out the room after he was done speaking. Did you literally have to chase him, or it was sort of chasing? Like I, I he, did you he, knock someone down? He was making a beeline, and uh, so I I like grabbed his um, his assistant and said, "Can I get a minute or two uh, with the governor?" And she said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just got to go to the bathroom." So. <laughs> Um, we, go. we all lined I once up. Stood next, I, was in a, I, well, I won't go into it. Never mind. I'll just say Joe Lieberman and leave it at that. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, so, um, were you nervous? Now, you're an intern. How old are you, Mike? Uh, 22. 22 years old. Mm -hmm. um, and there you look at that. The Valley Indian gave you the opportunity to, to, to interview arguably the most powerful man in the world, probably. Probably. Um, He's next Canada. to He Man mm -hmm. and like Charles Barkley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Charles, yeah. Number three. Um, so yeah, I was a little nervous. I mean, he um, he's easy now, to I, I want talk to. Actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna totally interrupt because mm -hmm. I had an email last night from a reporter who covers state politics. I won't name this reporter, mm -hmm. who said to me, he can be really prickly when he wants to be, mm -hmm. and he's also if you ask him a dumb question, he'll call you out on it immediately. Mm -hmm. Now of course I've seen that happen. Yeah, I didn't point. tell you any of any of the, any of this. <laughs> I have my so half of me was hoping maybe he'd kick you in the shins or something, and this would be, we get some good, you got video of it, right? And, yeah, yeah. All right. So, that being said, where, what was it like talking to... Uh... Um, I was a little nervous. I had, my knees were a little shaky, but um, uh, I was confident in my questions. Um, did you go at him with, uh, what questions did you ask him first? I got two questions in, and the first one was um, about the Oxford Airport Development Zone veto that he just laid down. Now this was a bill that got almost universal support in um, the state legislature that would have created sort of a tax haven around the Oxford Waterbury Airport. Um, and I think it was it, it was a total. I mean, we don't cover state politics. Mm -hmm. We're you know we're a local site, but it, that seemed that veto seemed to come out of nowhere. nowhere. I know it was a surprise to people in Oxford. Absolutely, um, it, w it was a big surprise, big shock to the um, state senators and state reps that represent the area. And, so uh, what'd you ask him? So I asked him, um, you know, uh, why, Governor, um, did you veto this bill, um, especially in light of the fact that yesterday, July the 12th, he um, signed a, between 50 and $70 million um, tax, in, uh, tax break for Cigna, a big insurance company, um, to headquarter itself in Bloomfield. Bloomfield? Bloomfield. Um, and he said, where's Oxford? And he said, where is Oxford? So, I, And I said, so why Bloomfield and not Oxford, Governor? Like, this had universal support. And, um, and he said, essentially, that um, he's created this new um, bureau, uh, Department of Economic and Community Development, and he wants to consolidate uh, all the tax breaks and all that kind of incentives under this one umbrella, under his commissioner, uh, who was also at the at the luncheon? So did he say that there's still a chance the Oxford uh, development zone yes. is still going to happen? Uh, yes, potentially, but he wants it to come under this new um, Connecticut Airports Authority that he's just created. Um, Do you have any kind of timeline? Are we talking? No, I didn't give any sort of timelines. Um, okay. But it seems like this um, this this new commissioner for the um, Department of Economic and Community Development is going to move pretty fast, um, so that's that's was his that was his main reason for vetoing this thing. And then he also said, you know, 
I talk to people around there and I ask them, is there a specific set of businesses that are looking to come into Oxford that would come in because of this development plan? And he said, uh, he said no, there was nothing um, specific. And he said, if there were specific things, we should know about them and we should run it through our regular channels rather than have, I think there's five different airports in Connecticut, have five different economic development zones for the five different airports. So that was his answer about that. Was, uh, did you talk to Marianne Jayton Rogers or Herman Schuler? Was, was he there? But he's, he's the head of uh, economic development for the town of Oxford who was... He may have been there. I didn't, I didn't see him or track him down. We'll um, probably call him after we... Absolutely. Uh, after we forced you into this podcast, <laughs> what about what did Mary Ann Drayton Rogers said? And she's she, a Democrat herself. It was well. interesting. She 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 got up during the luncheon and um, oh, so she was there. She was there. She was there. And she got up and she asked a question because Mike texted me. What's the Oxford first? Like? <laughs> I don't know if you were whispering in your mind. Did you whisper that text? As I you did. Were I whispered. Okay. Yes. Um, but uh, no, she was there and she. I I, I should have text- texted back. Al Roker. Like, Excuse me, um, Mrs. Roker. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> She got up and she asked, or she didn't, she just sort of said, like, made a um, comment. She's like, we look forward to welcoming you to the, um, to the Oxford airport. Like, you know, kind of wink, wink, um, prompting him <laughs> Did to. Did she wink? She, I don't think she winks, but it was like. And then Ken Dixon from the Post, that you screwed over yesterday. Is that, <laughs> no, did that it was, uh, Not quite. Um, but it was essentially like she was cueing him to make a comment about that. Um, nice. And so he did. He said, I know there's been some buzz about the veto that Damn, I Damn, look at that. Laid down yeah. recently. Um, so she didn't confront him. She just raised the issue. She raised the issue. And then That's he, why um, she's a politician. See, we would just good. yell. We would just, yeah, just throw <sighs> bricks. That's why I don't leave the office. <laughs> right. Um, so he brought, he essentially said what I just said uh, a minute ago. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Did you get any other uh, questions that... that um, I, I got a, a, a good response from him. Well, I got the second question I got in had to do with. Um, I said, you know, we um, we cover and Sonia and Derby. These are places with um, that are pretty dependent on services. Um, uh, there was some talk back in May when the um, Department of Mental Health Commissioner came by. Um, she said that you know, if this Plan B, infamous Plan B budget goes through, then Demas could see. The Department of Mental Health could see some serious cuts. Um, Which has started actually when you were at that. They sent out a list, and uh, they are getting pre- hit pretty hard. They sent out a list while I was at the thing. Yeah, yeah, we put it on our Facebook page. Wow. Um, what did he respond to so that? So Roy says, um, you know, I have. Um, well, he said first of all, the deal's not dead. He was, got, he got kind of bristly about that. Actually, he's like I don't like your terminology. The deal's not dead. What did um, you think at that point? I kind of said, well, oh, so you, I turned it into a question. Oh, so you still have confidence that... You're looking for Mary Ann Drayton Rogers. Hey, help me out! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I asked him, like, so, oh, so you think, you know, the, the deal's not dead yet? And he said, well, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, the unions... And he went back to talking points about how sort of, um, um, you know, 57% of the, of, the, of the unionized workforce voted for the deal. Um, you know, most of the unions themselves voted for the deal, and it was these rules... Um, Seaback rules that sort of sunk it, but he right. said it could come back, and that he has fought hard to maintain a commitment to social services. And how about how about you know uh, one thing that we were talking about earlier, like the city of Derby, Elizabeth Street. One of the, one of the economic engines of Elizabeth Street is that courthouse right. where there could be layoffs. Right. Did, did uh, any local officials ask about that in any way? Or? No, no, no. It was. I mean, the audience at this thing was mostly business um, people. See, I think all of the people who spoke, other than Mary Ann Drayton Rogers, were. Um, CEOs, presidents, owners of companies in the area, mm-hmm. um, uh, and they had questions sort of about like how do we hook into specific uh, grant structures, um, etc. Okay, so that's that. Any mm-hmm. uh, final thoughts there? Um, he's he's slick, Malloy. He doesn't he speak he doesn't speak with notes, no notes. He's, everything's off the top of his head because I guess he's dyslexic. Um, did you know that? No, and I guess I we're going to have to... I think I saw a story. I didn't know that, no. And we can fact check that. News Junkie had one about people were holding up signs, and it was ironic because like he they were each he holding up letters, it. and he was just jumbling them in his mind. Uh, oh, no. So, oh, it's he, so he speaks But that's, that's like that one of the defining characteristics of a, of a good politician mm-hmm. is the ability just to communicate in any way with anybody. And he was very, very funny. Well, we're going to have to save the jokes for our, our next podcast. All right, peace out. <laughs> peace out. I can't stop it!